Okay, today is August the 17th, 2014, Sunday. We still have the Ferguson riots taking place, and uh, right now they claim that it's pretty peaceful over there. I intend to drive back over there in about one hour. But I want to tell you, I am a retired cop in that area, and I want to give you some examples of things that I have seen in that region. Um, the purpose of this is to uh, let you know that when people claim that certain police officers, just like certain doctors or certain lawyers or anybody, have done something wrong, they don't necessarily have to be lying, but in most cases, or in some cases, they're telling the truth. Now, unfortunately in that region, it's been too much for too long. The status quo is to handle police policing in a very rude, stern, and inhumane or insensitive manner. Sometimes there is, thank you, ma'am, you have a good day, here's your driver's license, and so forth. But too many times, it's not like that. So, I'm going to give you a few true stories that have taken place as a result of um, uh, police officers' interactions with people in the same area, the St. Louis uh, County Municipal Area, uh, which Ferguson is a municipal area. Now, I can't name the names of the departments, and I won't do that, but I'm going to give you some examples of things that I have seen. See, when a person does something like what I'm doing right now to many people, you absolutely applaud it for your attempts to give the truth. To others, you absolutely hate it for the same reason. Before I became a police officer, let me state that I actually uh, had, no, had no knowledge of how policing actually worked, and I was a minister and an insurance agent. Um, I had gotten tired of being stopped so often in the same area, in fact, only a couple miles from where the incident with Michael Brown took place. So subsequently, I contacted someone that I knew into the police academy and so forth. That's another story. But the first thing that I noticed once I was hired with one of the municipalities out there was the insensitivity toward people. And as a minister, this was kind of shocking to me. It wouldn't have been shocking to me if it had been one officer. It wouldn't have been shocking to me if it had been some time. What was shocking to me is that it was uh, basically the uh, modus operandi for police officers, that they were insensitive to people. It was almost like a joke. I remember coming to the police station, there was a lady um, pretty distraught about something that happened in relation to her children. And she was going to file a complaint on the officer. I had just gotten into police work. I was still a probationary officer. And at that time, um, you know, I'm listening to how those who were there handled the situation. And I saw the professionalism that they gave, the guy gave, the officer gave the glass, uh, threw the glass to the lady, and he was going to go back and pull the uh, index card and uh, take a look at the incident. To my surprise, once he went around the corner, he and the other buddy there, they actually were laughing and flipping it off. Like, uh, you know, please, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not even thinking about this woman. And they stood and talked for a while. And I was surprised that no attempt was made to even pull a foul up. Now, to you diehard cops, you're going to probably say that. You want the kind that we don't like. You're picking everything that we do. No, there's a time for you to do everything. There's a time for you to kick doors in, take names and everything. But to be a damn idiot and be insensitive every damn time that you deal with somebody in their time of need is what I have an issue with. Now, so to you, I guess I am the kind of cop that you don't like. To the public who needs me, or to maybe you cop, to your mother, your father, your sister, brother, if they ran into a problem, I'm sure you would want them to run into me instead of some of these other guys that you know out here because you know how they are. Let's take a look at something here. Now, a friend of mine, a lady that is uh, known as a St. Louis diva, a gospel diva who actually was involved in a very critical car accident. Uh, she actually was supposed to be on the Oprah show. She's, uh, she was, um, she was um, um, 
arrested for supposedly careless and imprudent driving and DWI. Well, the officer was very rude. Her words was that she, he slammed her head down onto the, uh, the trunk of the car. Uh, I haven't known her ever to be a liar. And um, she, uh, her daughter was left in the car. She was uh, cursed out, called inward, and so forth, and arrested. When she got to the station, she asked about her daughter. And, she, he, and his reply was, what daughter? And um, she got a little irate and said, look, you left my daughter back there in the car. And he said, you going to take this breath test or not? And so she's asking about her, uh, her daughter, and so he said she refused to take the breath test. That could be a refusal if at the time that you're asked to take the test, you keep on gyrating about something else, you can get that. But what was the problem was the insensitivity, the slamming her on the hood, and later that particular charge of failure to uh, take the breath test was dropped. Uh, here's another incident, um, and this incident was uh, about a very elderly black lady. Uh, there was a court one night. And I heard this uh, <clears throat> commotion going outside, and so the old lady was trying to walk up to the window to find about the court uh, time. And she passed by the canine officer's uh, dog. It was a white female canine officer. And uh, the dog jumped at the car and startled the old lady, and she turned around with her cane, and she was pointing the cane at the dog. And I uh, was saying, you know, you better shut up. Well... You better shut up. Don't be barking at me. The canine woman came out. The police officer came out and hollered at the woman and said, you better shut up talking to that police dog. I will lock you up. That is, uh, he is a police officer like the rest of us, and if you don't respect him, I'm going to lock you up. So the brothers and sisters standing in line for court, I mean, they, they're getting all upset, worked up about the verbal, verbal uh, attack on the woman. <clears throat> The woman, the old woman said, ma'am, I don't know who you are, but I'm old enough to be your mother. She said, the white woman said, I don't care who you are. And this is not black, white. It happens with black and white, but this is what happened this day. So uh, she didn't comply with getting away from the car door, which she was only about three feet from the car when the canine was in the cage, not hurting the dog at all. So the woman said, she said, well, I told you, she said, I'm old enough to be your mother. She said, that's enough. You're under arrest. Now, when she, went, when they, when she said that, boy, the brothers in the crowd went, on, went, went berserk almost. And she grabbed the old lady's arm, pulled her to the ground, started pulling her to the door. You may ask, Mr. Superhero, honest cop, what did I do? You cannot interfere with the arrest of another police officer. You cannot do it. You can assist, but you cannot interfere. And if in the event, unless it's something that I think where somebody is an over-excessive danger to her life took place, I would never interfere. Because that's all they need from an honest cop is to cross a legal BS line. So anyway, she pulls the lady back to the back, through the door. I talked to the brothers because pretty soon there's going to be a Rodney King riot. They left the line. They were mobbing and everything. I said, brothers, you don't have no way to cover your behind. So everybody needs to shut up and be quiet. He said, because uh, you don't know how to cover yourself. So I went in with the woman. I went in with the police officer. And the woman was hurt. said her arm was hurt. So I told them to call the ambulance out. They called the ambulance out. There's nothing wrong with her arm. But she had been pulled as an old lady into the doggone police station and was being arrested. I told the old lady, I said, look, uh, I'm Officer Rogers. If you need me to testify anything, I'm here. And so after it was over, the police woman came to me while standing there in court. She said, uh, I need you to give a statement about what that lady did. I said, you really don't want me to give a statement. The worst thing in the world that you could do in this situation is for me to give a statement. She said, well, if that's the way you feel about it, hearing my tone, she went on to someone else. That's the last I heard of that incident. This is in the same area that Michael Brown had his problem. Not the city of Ferguson, mind you, but very close. Now, let's go to another incident. 
There was a lady that came to court one day, highly upset. She was highly upset because she said that a certain officer had already told her that he had taken care of the, the fugitive warrant that she had for failure to appear for traffic. The judge said it's still in the system. She got became more irate. She made some gyrations, and said a bunch of things, and ended up they took off and took her upstairs to talk to uh, whoever was acting sergeant at the time, and subsequently, I heard a couple days later, went to the chief. Well, a big thing ensued later, and through the great volume of the station, found out that she was upset because this particular sergeant had taken her home instead of to the police station, and she had to give him sexual favors and did a, a dance on the table. She said she could even describe, describe his house if they doubted her, and nothing was done to this individual because he was a friend of the cops in power. Another situation. There was a man that came to the station and said that after he was arrested on the street that his CDs were missing. So he was accusing either the tow company or the arresting officers. So I happened to come to assist the arresting officer and they asked me, was, was there a, a, a highly expensive radio in that vehicle at the time that I arrived? And I said, as far as I could see, there was no damage whatsoever. This has become a big thing because before I even got into my patrol car, they wanted me to respond upstairs to City Hall to give an immediate report of what I saw. So everything was intact when I left. So later, um, and there were some C uh, CDs stolen and so forth, Later, uh, one of the uh, Board of Aldermen got upset about the situation and wanted some more action take, taken on it, some more investigation. So a correction officer that didn't like this particular person too much stated she had seen the CDs in his locker. And uh, he was ordered to clear his locker out, and that when he opened the door, as what, for what I was told, the CDs fell on the floor and he confessed. He got a minor, very minor reprimand from his friend that was a chief, but that was an incident of stealing. Stealing the same St. Louis County municipal area. Not a county, the county itself, even though they have their issues too. If a mayor does not like a citizen in one of these munis around St. Louis County, because the population is small and they know most of the people, They'll do a lot of things to that person, and many of you who live in this area know that I'm speaking beyond the truth, if it's possible to do that. I've seen heavy patrol orders given around, to be given around that person's house. Arrest any fugitive. Stop anybody for traffic violations. Um, uh, heavy patrol. Close surveillance of that area. And I've seen uh, code enforcement officers be sent to dog out a person simply because a particular elected official didn't like them. You know it's the truth. See, it's these kind of things that I say that they probably never will resolve that, and you might think that's petty. It's petty unless you're the person who's got to pay two or three hundred dollars for uh, uh, for failure to cut your grass. And then you got to worry about it over and over and over again, all because you're in an area where there is insensitivity to people. Now, that seems minor, but let it happen to you and you got to go to court. It won't seem so minor to you then. Um, there was a newly elected mayor. And this particular, uh, particular uh, newly elected mayor wanted... Um, he wanted uh, some investigations done on anything in his department that could cause liability to the city. Now, that makes sense, doesn't it? To open up an investigation to find out if anything would cause the city uh, to be sued. What came out of that investigation, I can't even talk about it to this day because there was so much done so wrong and so corrupt 
that it's not even um, profitable or, or, or it's just say, uh, expedient that I tell you those things. Now, why am I even bringing it up? The things that happened were things that were done by police officers, and they never should have been done. This was all about corruption. There was on the news in St. Louis, there was a time when uh, there was a, uh, one of the police chiefs and the mayor of a city right adjacent to Ferguson. That city chief and uh, the mayor admitted that thousands of dollars were spent illegally for money that was supposed to be relegated to police training. To this day, even though admission was made to the TV news reporters, and they followed it up for a year, to my knowledge, nothing has happened at this point. Now, are these things fair? No. What could stop that? I'm a strong proponent that there needs to be a civilian oversight committee that is not a part of the, the governing body such as the city, is not a part of the city that the cops work for, or whether it be state or county or whatever, but it's independent that has the power to review and to levy punishments up to and including termination for guilty individuals. This will bring about honesty. And also, I, I say, there must be a exclusion made for officers that want to give you information, which, quote, unquote, they want to use a little little um, minuscule insulting title and call it whistleblower. It's not whistleblower, it's a truth blower. And that's what they swear to do, to do things to help the citizens, to help the people, to make the environment more wholesome. I've never seen what you call a whistleblower blower saying anything that was really slanderous, but rather it was at his own risk that he was saying something that could help the city and prevent the city from having liabilities and loss of finances. So these people need to be protected. There has to be an independent oversight committee. If you don't do it now, you're going to have to do it later. And until you do, these problems will continue. How do you expect men to work together that do a lot of good together? And keep in mind, these incidents, even the bad cops, have days where they do good things, respond to fires, direct traffic, huh? stop fights, stop uh, a lot of trouble in the, in the community. But then they don't have the power to turn and be corrupt when they choose to, or abusive to whom they choose to, or to take the power of the law into their own hands. You might say you are a person that is a, a dreamer, but even every profession has it. We're having problems in the White House and Congress and basically causing problems with people all over. That's true. Yet it's still in this situation, that is my recommendation. These things need not be. We had an incident once where a lieutenant, was known to be drunk. They were locking and arresting people up who were having problems, probably paying their little bills and doing things for their families and struggling. These people get locked up because they get taken. And it's a liability to the city and to the people that pay the taxes. But this individual is allowed. So everybody in the department knew that this high-ranking lieutenant was a drunk and was driving drunk. And until he had an accident, nothing was done. But then he still was allowed to function because he was a friend of the upper boys, the chief and the mayor. But what happened one night was out of his jurisdiction on a major highway, drunk as he could be, he had a major accident, tore up the police car, and when they found him, he was so drunk, he couldn't even wake up. And the gun actually... The gun was still laying there on the seat of the, uh, the car. So that's the type of injustice and unfairness that we see. These things should not be. What am I doing right now? 
I'm telling you things that I've seen. These are not things any more shocking. In fact, what you see on TV is far more shocking as to how people are abused. But there's another side to that. Some of these people are just outright bad. You see videos where cops are beating people and so forth. Some of these people are just outright bad. And when you take a video segment in a short excerpt of it, you can make anything appear to be any way you want it to be. If it's injustice, it, can be, it will be unjust, unjust. And you can make it appear to be uh, 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 abuse when it's really self-defense. But in some cases, the evidence is clear. But we need to try to change what we can. And what we cannot change, we just have to let it remain. So as I have given you a few of these examples of things that have happened, I want to close with another one in the same region where the ranking police officers on TV, particularly the chief of Ferguson, wants to make it appear that the officers are always right. Now, just that in itself is almost insane because there are bad people and wrongdoing people everywhere. And this particular officer came from one of the areas, we understand that uh, if he came from Jennings, one of the most racist that had ever existed in Missouri. Here's an incident that happened. I got a call to respond to an officer in aid. And when I arrived on the scene, uh, there was a, a white male rookie cop having trouble arresting a black female. She's about five foot seven, I guess about 150, 150 pounds. There's a lot of verbal stuff going, he had her wrist and so forth. And then several other cops that had gotten there before me, they all took action, and they started to apprehend her, they threw her down, they got her to the back seat of the car. And I was going to turn around and go back, but I noticed everybody got the tasers out and just started tasering one after another after another. I couldn't believe my eyes. So when I got out of the car and came on the scene, some of them hadn't looked up. The ones that looked up and saw me, they stopped but a couple others were still tasering them. Well, the tasers had actually lost power. Fortunately, they didn't have the power to give the shot, but many of them did. The person was already handcuffed behind the back with three heavy officers on her in a non-combatant uh, attitude at that time and wasn't fighting back. Is that excessive? I say it is. But did you want that to happen to your mother? Your father, your sister, your brother, no. Would they want, to, want it to happen to their mother, father, sister, brother, girlfriend, fiance? No. So as a minister, unfortunately, I bring these golden rule scenarios in, but don't get me wrong. I don't take a weak position. I believe that deadly force and everything is needed at the right place, at the right time, and for the right reasons. For many of these reasons, are unjust and unjust. So as I close, I want to say to you that Missouri is what they call an employment at will state, and some of the municipalities over there don't even have a union. And a lot of these things are the reasons that the officers are as they are. And in fact, some of the corruption is because our officers are so poorly paid. Do you know that some of the officers make $12, $13 an hour? There are some that make less. This is not excusable. When there's people that have jobs that sit behind desks and make two, three, four times that money and don't risk their life ever, the whole situation in the state of Missouri needs a total review from top to bottom. And I hope you help make it happen.